This is an iPad 6th generation charging port replacement. We start off with applying heat at 200 degrees Celsius from the upper left corner of the screen. We take the metal opening tool to create a gap between the frame and the touchscreen. Once the gap is created, we replace the metal opening tool with a plastic film. Make sure you dab alcohol on the film before inserting it. Now we keep adding heat and alcohol simultaneously as we insert the film around the upper edge of the screen. Anytime you feel pressure, stop and repeat. Heat, alcohol, and film until the adhesive is loosened in the upper section. As we make our way toward the left side of the iPad, we continue repeating the process. Heat, alcohol, film. Don't forget, if you're interested in learning how to do this and other types of mobile electronic repairs, visit our website for our upcoming trainings at www.cellphonerepairacademy.com. Once we turn the corner and are close to the home button, we stop. It's very important to take note, on the right side of the home button is a flex cable. If we insert the film too deep in this area, we will damage it. So what do we do? We start at the lower right corner by inserting the metal opening tool to create a gap. Once the gap is created, we continue with our process of heat, alcohol, and film, and move right towards the home button. The main difference here is that the film is not inserted fully. We are only using the tip of the corner of the film to loosen the adhesive. Again, we have to be very cautious in not inserting the film too deep because this is the area of the home button flex cable and we can easily rip it. Once I go over the home button area, I will retrace the left side of the iPad with the film and slightly separate the screen from the housing. Now there is still adhesive in the area of the home button, so what we will do here is create a gap with our fingertips, get a spudger and dab alcohol on the tip of the spudger, then we're going to work our way around the frame. We are loosening the last bit of adhesive in this area. Keep applying heat while you insert the spudger with alcohol. So the right side of the iPad is still fully sealed with adhesive. What we will do is gently lift the left side of the screen while we apply heat to the right side of the screen. We apply a quick blast of air to clean out any debris on the LCD. Once we reach this point, we have to make sure to support the touchscreen since it is still connected to the motherboard. If you let the screen fall back, the cables will rip and you'll have to replace the touchscreen with a new screen. Our next step is to work on the corners of the LCD. Each corner has a screw that is covered by black tape or adhesive. We start with the upper left corner, use our tweezers to remove the adhesive and expose the screw. These screws will require a Phillips screwdriver. Then we move on to the other three corners and do the same. Make sure you keep the screws organized, it'll save you time once you build the iPad back up again. After all four screws are removed, we will use a flathead screwdriver on all corners of the LCD. We insert the screwdriver through the epoxy on the corner and make sure to dig in under the metal plate. The LTD is installed on top of a metal plate, therefore if the flathead screwdriver is inserted in between the LCD and metal plate, you're going to crack that LCD. Once all four corners are released, make sure to lift the screen from the left to the right to a 90 degree angle. If the LCD bends further forward, the LCD flex cable will rip, and again, you'll have to replace that LCD. Now we will remove the screw on the battery connector. This is a single screw that uses a Phillips screwdriver. Once this screw is removed, insert a small film in between the battery and the motherboard connector to prevent contact. Then we're going to work to release the metal plate that secures the LCD and the touchscreen flex cables. This metal plate holds three screws that require a Phillips screwdriver. Remove the three screws and you'll see here that the metal plate stayed attached to our LCD flex cable, which is totally fine. As a good rule of thumb, we will put these three screws back into place to keep them organized and not to lose them. Just don't tighten them up all the way. Next, we will disconnect the touchscreen flex cable with our spudger. Then with the tweezers, we remove the tape that is covering the Touch ID connector and place it to the side. Don't lose it. You're going to need it. Now, with the tip of the spudger, open the latching mechanism of the Touch ID connector and pull the connector out. From here, we will work on releasing the right side of the touchscreen. With our film, we insert it from the top and work our way down in a swift motion. 
Just be very careful as you make your way down. The touchscreen flex cable and the Touch ID flex cable are attached to the touchscreen. So just make sure they're not in the way as you work your way down the screen. Once the touchscreen is released, we will work on removing the motherboard from the frame. On the upper right corner, we will remove the metal plate that holds the cameras, headphone jack, and microphone flex cables. This plate has three screws and we use a Phillips screwdriver here. We disconnect the front camera first, followed by the audio jack and microphone. The audio jack connector is wrapped with tape around the motherboard, so we get our tweezers and rip the tape to release the cable. Then we disconnect the microphone. Same thing here, we put the screws back into place. Now we go to the power button and volume button flex cable, just like the Touch ID. We remove the tape, unlatch the connector and pull it out. Now we're going to disconnect that rear camera. And from here we're going to rotate the iPad to work on the lower section. Right under where the home button is located are two screws. Make sure to tighten those up. These screws are what hold the metal plate that holds the charging port in place. When these screws become loose, the charging port starts to wiggle and it'll get damaged. Now remove the long screws on the sides of the charging port with the Phillips screwdriver. Next, we will work to remove the Wi-Fi antenna flex cables. Take the spudger with alcohol to loosen up the adhesive around the flex cables and with your fingertips, work to loosen them up gently. Finally, with the spudger, disconnect the antennas from the connectors. The charging port flex cable comes with the connectors to the speakers. These connectors are covered with tape, therefore use the spudger with alcohol to remove the tape and expose them. Unlatch the connectors and pull out the cables. With your spudger, get a dab of alcohol and work your way under the charging port flex cable, making sure to loosen the adhesive that holds it in place onto the frame. Dab some alcohol on the plastic film and insert it under the charging port. Do so in a continuous downward motion. Continue to dab the alcohol on the film and work your way down. We cannot move the film back up. This will cause damage to the traces on the board, so just remember to continue moving downward. Once we get to about halfway, we use our heat gun and apply heat to the back of the housing where the motherboard is located at 300 degrees Celsius. Steer clear of that back camera because we can damage it if it's exposed to high levels of heat. So we continue working our way down the motherboard with the plastic film. Once we reach the battery connector, we work our way down the opposite side of the motherboard. We skip the battery connector area and continue to work our way down and around until the motherboard is released. Next, turn the motherboard around and remove the tape that covers the charging port traces. We're going to add flux and solder to each of those traces, one at a time, making sure to be generous with the flux and solder. Add a blot of solder to the soldering tip and move your tip in a fast back and forward motion as you start to release the charging port flex cable gently. Add flux to the traces and with your solder wick, clean the remaining solder. You will see these two golden squares on the edges of the traces. Make sure not to touch them. These are our reference points to align the new charging port. Once that's complete, we align the new charging port on top of the traces. The new port comes with two see-through squares on the edges. These see-through squares will lay on top of the golden squares below. Next, we apply flux on the flex cable and then we solder the first trace on the right side next to the golden square. The next trace we solder will be the first one on the left side next to the opposite golden square. We do this to ensure it stays aligned as we continue to solder the remaining traces. As we solder the traces, we make sure to apply pressure with our tweezers.
We go over each individual trace one more time with solder and then with a Q-tip dab some alcohol and clean the area. Finally, with our tweezers, we check each trace to make sure there is no movement or bouncing. If any of these traces are bouncing, that means they did not attach properly to the motherboard and we would have to re-solder them again. Now we cover the traces with heat tape to prevent contact with the frame, which can cause a short, and then we insert the motherboard back into the housing. Insert the plastic film between the battery and the motherboard connector. Next, insert the power button. Then, remove the blue film to expose the adhesive on the new charging port flex cable and install the charging port onto the frame. This is followed by connecting the speakers. Now install heat tape over the connectors for the speakers and then reinstall the long screws from the charging port. Organize the Wi-Fi antennas back into place and connect them with our fingertips. We make sure to reuse the tape that goes over the power button connector and remove the screws from the upper section of the motherboard. Then we will reconnect all of the connectors and install the metal plates to secure them into place. Now we connect the Touch ID and install the tape over the connector. This is followed by installing the touchscreen flex cable and the LCD flex cable. Install the metal plate over the flex cables with the three screws to secure them into place. Make sure to remove the plastic film between the battery and the motherboard and insert the screw into place. Then we secure the LCD with the four corner screws. So we're gonna move forward with sealing the touchscreen. We use T7000 around the edge of the frame. This adhesive will bond to the original adhesive of the iPad. Make sure to go around the entire edge of the frame, install the touchscreen, and you're all set. So if you're interested in learning how to do this and other types of mobile electronic repairs, make sure to visit our website for our upcoming courses at www.cellphonerepairacademy.com. We hope to see you in class soon.